guys, hope you're all doing well. Today's video is going to be my haul video for SoccerCon 2023. I'm excited to share you guys everything that I got from what I purchased to the autographs I got and freebies that I was able to grab. Before I actually get started with the haul, I'd like to thank our sponsor for today's video, Tokyo Treat and Soccer Co. I'll talk more about them later in the video. So let's get started with the haul. So the first items I'll show you guys are items that I got from Artist Alley. I love just walking through the Artist Alley and especially at Soccer Con this year, it was a lot bigger because they actually expanded the convention into two buildings. So we got a whole big room for a whole bunch of different artists. And so I had a blast walking around, even though I don't think I spent that much time at the Artist Alley itself. But the first print I wanna show you guys is this beautiful, cute, adorable print of Gojo prancing in a field of flowers. When I saw this, I knew I had to instantly buy it because it was so adorable and it definitely fit, you know, the spring season of, you know, flowers blooming. And of course, Gojo is one of my favorite characters from Jujutsu Kaisen, so I knew I had to get him. But yeah, this is from an artist named Julianne Doodles. I'll try to leave the username um, on the corner of the video as well as her social media links in the description box. But yeah, look at him. He just looks so happy and um, it's very simple but also very adorable for this little art print. Moving on, we have our second print, which is Year Camp. I actually got two Year Camp prints. It is from an artist that I actually found at Anime Expo. However, because I was flying to Los Angeles at that time, I didn't have a great way to um, store any bigger prints. So I asked her if she had any consideration of going to soccer con and she told me that she actually had never been to the Pacific Northwest before, but she'll keep it in mind. and. I follow her on Instagram and I saw that she was attending soccer con this year so I was really happy um, that I was able to get the prints that I want and you actually might recognize this particular print because I did get this at Anime Expo however um, it had a slight stain on it and it kind of bugged me so I came back to her booth to buy this one. The artist that um, made these prints is Ringo and I love her business card so so much. It is this really cool transparent card with these bunny apple images which is so cute. This is definitely a business card. I won't forget because it's very cool. Anyways, so here is the prints that I really really love from her booth. It is this Nadeshko Rin print and the foods that are in the series very iconic food. They look so delicious and this print just looks beautiful. And the second year camp print that I got is this one of Rin. I just love how peaceful and scenic this print is. I love the blue color and if you guys don't know, blue is my favorite color so I just thought this would fit really well with my room and yeah, Rin just looks so so cute. But yeah, that is the two prints I got from Ringo and the last artist that I got print from is actually a user I follow on Twitter. She actually doesn't have an official store. She sells her artwork on the imprint website. However, she announced that for the very first time she was going to be booting at a convention um, and it was at Soccer Con. So I was really stoked to finally get some of the prints that I really liked from her. So here is her business card. I love this design so much. I just love collecting business cards. But yeah, so the first print that I got is this beautiful UA print. If you guys don't know who UA is, he is from Cardcaptor Sakura. Cardcaptor Sakura is one of my childhood series growing up. I remember watching it every day on a daily basis and Yue was one I felt very attracted to. I thought he was very cool and mysterious um, in the series and I just knew I had to pick him up. And actually the next two prints I'll show you guys are from the same series and these two prints are actually the reason why I ended up following her as well. So it is Xilin and Hua Cheng from Heaven's Official Blessing. Look at these two prints. They look amazing. I love the contrast and colors from the blue whitish of Xilin to the dark black red of Hua Cheng. Um, I definitely will be displaying this 
on my walls somehow um and i hope i do it soon because these prints are so amazing but yeah she is one of my favorite illustrators on twitter that i really enjoy following she has tons of different um illustrations that i really want to get but i was on a budget so these were the two plus the ua that i ended up getting those are all the art prints that i got let's move on to the next few items so before I show you guys the next item, I actually have a very interesting story to share about this particular commission. So I actually reached out to this artist a few weeks before Soccer Con because I got a commission from her last year, which I really, really liked and I wanted to get another one for this year's Soccer Con. If you guys are curious on what commission I'm talking about, I did post an image of the watercolor commissions that I got last year of Spy Family, Lloyd, Anya, and Yor. They're so beautiful. They're on these really small shikishi boards and the artist did a great job with the illustration and the watercolor of the commission. So I definitely wanted to see if I could get a new one this year for SoccerCon. I ended up not getting a response from her on IG and I tried looking for her booth name on the 2023 Artist Alley listing. However, I couldn't find her either so I assumed that she just wasn't attending this year. However, on Saturday, about 30 minutes before the Artist Alley was closing, I was just kind of doing my last minute round of shopping um, before the Flow concert that was happening later on that night. Um, and then 10 minutes before, my cousin calls me and said that there was a huge line already forming for Flow and that I needed to get in line with him. So I was like, okay, I got to rush out to Artist Alley and I was making cuts through the different aisles and I ended up bumping into this table and lo and behold it was the artist that did the watercolor commission but it was 10 minutes before artist alley was closing so I wasn't sure if she was going to do the commission and I talked to her and then she finally said that she can try to so I ended up getting my commission so if you guys don't recognize these characters it is Aqua and Kana from Oshinoko um, to be honest I wasn't really thinking of a character in mind when I met her 10 minutes before Artist Alley was closing because honestly I wasn't even planning on getting commission but because Oshinoko was being promoted at Soccer Con this year, they were the characters I just instantly thought. And Kana is my favorite girl, so I knew I had to get her. And it was a better deal to get two characters on a shikishi board, so I ended up choosing Aqua. So I think she did an amazing job with this commission. They look so good. I love the detail of Aqua's eye. Like, look at that. That's so beautiful. And Kana just looks fantastic as well. This whole entire commission looks amazing. So I'm so grateful that she took her time to finish my commission, even though it was literally last minute. Um, if you guys don't know, the last day of the con, which was Sunday, is usually the shortest day as well. So um, she was still working on my commission after the artist alley was closed on Sunday, but I was able to like sit behind her booth so she can finish um, doing her watercolors. So I'm very grateful that she was able to finish my commission and I think it turned out so nice. But yeah, very glad to get this commission again and I will definitely try to get one next year if she does make it to the Artist Alley listing for Soccer Con. I'm very happy to have this and can't wait to display this on my shelves. The next items I got are some usual items I usually pick up at conventions, but I think I did a good job sticking to my budget this year because I ended up only getting one set of pins or by one, I mean, from one artist only. And actually this artist wasn't even at Soccer Con. Um, the pin maker is Peony Pins Co. I bought tons of pins from her before from MXTX series to Heaven's Official Blessing. So these pins right here are Heaven's Official Blessing, but uh, let me show you guys the pins. So we have Hua Chang and Xilian from Heaven's Official Blessing. These are just so beautiful. I knew I had to pick them up when um, I saw that she posted on an Instagram story. So she wasn't at Soccer Con, but she had a friend that had a booth at Soccer Con. So um, I'm assuming that she gave extra pins to that pin maker friend, and then she sold the extras at Soccer Con, which was very nice because, of course, I was attending Soccer Con. And here is the gold variant as well. And these gold variants are actually not for myself. It's going to be a gift to my cousin 
because um, she wanted to have some pins from Heaven's Official Blessings, so I thought these would be a nice gift. And she was the one that actually introduced me to MXTX Stories as well as Heaven's Official Blessings. So I'm very grateful that she introduced me to this series because it is one of my favorite series of all time. But yeah, these are the pins that I got. I actually had an Ita bag for SoccerCon this year. And for all three days, I had a different little display. My eat a bag theme for this year was actually Heaven's Official Blessing pins. So I actually have accumulated tons of Heaven's Official Blessing pins over the past few years that I've been collecting pins. So it's pretty crazy, but I'm really glad to have these um, new additions to my pin collection. Now more about our sponsors. Thank you Tokyo Tree and Sakako for sponsoring today's video. If you aren't familiar with these two brands, Tokyo Tree and Sakura Co. are monthly Japanese snack subscription boxes that aims to share the experience of Japan from the comfort of your own home through the form of snacking. Tokyo Treat and Sakura Co. have a different theme each month, so you'll always be enjoying something new. For the month of May, Tokyo Treat and Sakura Co. are inviting you to join in on the Yuzakura experience, which is the Japanese tradition of viewing cherry blossoms at night. As you can see here, both boxes have beautifully designed cherry blossoms that contain exclusive and seasonal snacks that won't be available when spring is over. The Yuzakura experience is the perfect way to celebrate the end of spring and immerse yourself in the beauty of the Sakura season. So for the theme of the Tokyo Treat box is Sakura Starlight Snack Fest and for Sakura Co, the theme is Moonlit Sakura. So I'm going to move the Sakura Co box to the side and give you guys a little unboxing of the Tokyo Treat box right here. As you can see here, I love the night darker contrast of this Tokyo Treat box compared to what we got in April, but so, so pretty. And let me open this up. Here we have a bite into Japan. I love how beautiful these boxes are. And for every box uh, comes with a booklet that contains information of each of the snacks in this box here, including dietary restrictions and information of ingredients, as well as some tidbits of information about Japanese culture. So this is how it looks like. As you can see here, I'm going to show you a slight flip through of some of the snacks that are featured in this box and some cultural facts as well. So a very informative guide. And let's look at the snacks in this box. Of course, we have another flavor of Kit Kat, banana caramel. I love how innovative the flavoring for these brands are because, you know, in America, we usually have, you know, the basic Kit Kat flavors, but in Japan, they definitely come with some more interesting um, flavors. Here we have, oh, Kelby. So I ate some items from this brand before. I think maybe some like shrimp chips, but this looks very cool. And we got course some drinks. Tokyo Treat boxes includes up to 20 of the latest most exclusive limited edition and seasonal flavor Japanese snacks and can't go wrong with ramen or I guess this is like a noodle style dish. Got some more interesting snacks on the side. Ooh some candy as well. And all these snacks are just so fun to open and play around. And of course, can't go wrong with some Ghana chocolate. I think this is matcha flavor. And last but not least, we have these uh, crackers as well. All right, so here is the Sakura Co box, which is so pretty. As well as compared to April, this has a more of a darker color theme to represent the nighttime of Sakura very beautiful and I just love all the little cherry blossom details all over the box which is very nice and let's open this box up and here as usual nice to meet you let's have tea 
and we have this very beautiful postcard. I love these postcards so much. The illustration is beautiful. And of course, similar to the Tokyo Treat Box, there is an information booklet that contains um, all of the snacks that are included in this box related to dietary restriction and ingredients list, as well as information about the culture. And of course, these booklets are very beautifully designed. Pictures of the snacks inside. And we have some information about the culture, like the Yuzakura viewing experience. But yeah, that is the booklet right here. And let's hop to the items inside. So first we have our some very delectable candy. Sakura Co. boxes are directly sourced from local Japanese snack makers with each box coming with 20 traditional, authentic, and artisan Japanese snacks, including Japanese teas and a special Japanese tableware. We have this really beautiful cracker that has some cherry blossom printed on it. More snacks. And here, I believe these are the teas for this month. Oh, I love my little sweetbreads. These are definitely my favorite from the box. And jelly. Ooh, similar to what we saw in the Tokyo Treat box. This large bread as well. And this is the special tableware. I'm going to open for you guys. And for this season, ooh, it's this very nice cup. Very beautiful, and it has the uh, Soccer Co. logo. All right, so here is an overview of the two boxes. You definitely don't want to miss out this opportunity to experience the end of spring and beauty of soccer season in a fun and delicious way. And it's not too late to get these May themed boxes as well. If you're interested in subscribing to Tokyo Tree, or Soccer Co., or even both, for yourself or gift it to a loved one this season, I'll leave my affiliate links down below, as well as my code Diana to get $5 off your first purchase of Tokyo Tree and Hanami for additional bonus items every month for life for your Soccer Co. purchase. Thank you so much again to Tokyo Tree and Soccer Co. for sponsoring today's video. So without further ado, let's get back to the haul. So here are the next items that I bought from the exhibition hall, specifically the Yen Press booth. And usually if you watch, you know, other videos on my channel, I tend to buy most of my manhwas, mangas, light novels exclusively from Right Stuff Anime because they have, I think, the best deals compared to if you buy in stores or at conventions. However, um, before SoccerCon happened, Yen Press and Ice Press were making announcements on freebies and purchase bonus that they were giving out specifically for Ice Press. If you made a purchase of one of their books of the Ice Press line, then you can get some purchase bonus. And these were the purchase bonus that were given out. Um, it is name tags of two characters from a series called A Business Proposal. So Ice Press just licensed this, I think. A few months ago and the first volume of a business proposal is set to release next month in may anyways i love this series so so much it is one of my favorite rom-com series but we have the id of hare shin hare the female protagonist and kang temu the male protagonist of the series if you guys don't know um what a business proposal is about it is basically a girl named shin hare who is a regular employee one day, her friend asked her if she can attend this like arranged marriage meeting in her place. So Shinhara ends up um, disguising herself and she finds out when she arrives at the date that her date is the CEO of her company. So it's a very interesting a turn of events, but I really love their dynamic a lot. And yeah, I'm so happy to have these purchase bonus worth the extra few dollars I had to spend compared to if I bought it on Right Stuff. But yeah, so here are the books themselves. So the two volumes I ended up picking up was The Abandoned Empress, Volume 4, and The Remarried Empress, Volume 2. So as you can see here, very similar theme and titles. But let me just show you guys a flip through of both volumes. So 
The Abandoned Empress is a reincarnation series. Follows a girl named Tia who in her past life was killed by her husband and emperor due to very series of unfortunate events. Um, and then she was reborn and in this lifetime she is striving to not be reunited with him again and not get killed by him. So that is kind of the basis of the plot of the Remarried Empress. I know if people have a lot of mixed feelings about the series but I really love the art of it. It's very pretty and I don't really mind the story. Uh, I think I've read you know more frustrating stories um, and I think this one is not too bad. And the next series we have is the Remarried Empress. Navier looks so so beautiful in this cover. Very happy to have this next installment but basically this series follows an empress named Navier. She really works hard to be the best emperor she can be in her kingdom um, and she's married to the emperor who is also her childhood friend. One day the emperor um, after coming home from a hunting trip he brings home a mistress and their relationship takes a very interesting turn and toll as well. So a very frustrating and complicated political drama romance series. Those are the two volumes I picked up from the Eyes Press booth and I'm so happy to grab these purchase bonus as well because I love getting free things when I buy stuff. So yeah, thank you Eyes Press for those and cannot wait to read the new volumes. All right, so moving on to the autograph portion of the haul. So a lot of my con experience is actually attending these autograph sessions and getting autographs from different guests that attend these conventions. So SoccerCon will have these guest of honors and they would actually host these free autograph sessions that you can attend and get autographs for. I know other conventions do this as well. I know some guests tend to do like paid autographs but still a lot of them do free autographs for their fans which is very nice um so i've been attending cons for many years now and i've accumulated quite a lot of autographs if you guys are interested in seeing all the autographs i've gotten in previous conventions i do have a story highlight on my instagram if you want to see what autographs i got but for this year's lineup there was quite a lot of different guests from anime producers to directors, musical guests, voice actors. So very fortunate about Soccer Khan's lineup for this year, which was a great improvement from last year, mainly because the pandemic was still quite prevalent and the lockdown restriction was only kind of lifting up um, last year. So here are all of the Shikishi boards that I got autographs on. Um, a lot of people tend to get their autographs on the shikishi boards because it's just kind of like a Japanese thing. And so I've learned it from friends that I've um, gotten autographs with and I've bought tons of shikishi boards from Daiso in order to get my autographs. So this is the first autograph that I'll talk about and this is actually the members of Queen Bee. So if you guys don't know Queen Bee, they are a popular band in Japan and they actually performed a concert at SoccerCon this year on the first night. So I got all the signatures for the three members as well as I did attend their concert and I ended up purchasing a CD which they autographed as well. This is their latest album that was released. Very glad to have two autograph items so when i mentioned that it was like my sort of last purchase um i did make some purchases for autograph purposes but i wanted to kind of talk about it here so the next autographs i got um is from the guests representing bandai so i have shuhei yamamoto and shintaro inokawa I can't remember which autograph is for which, but there was two guests for Bandai and they were coming to promote. That time I got reincarnated as a slime movie, but they also worked on Blue Lock as well. So these are the autographs I got and I think these are from the second sessions that I went to. But yeah, very cute. Love the little stamp. And then um, this guest right here drew a little sketch of Rimuru and then this really cute tic-tac-toe um, signature, which is really cool. So this is from the second sessions that they had. 
but I did attend their first session um, because I just attend multiple sessions to get my autographs. So this was their first one. And this guest that did the tic-tac-toe earlier um, ended up drawing the slime instead for the first autograph session. So yeah, I attend multiple sessions just because um, not all autographs are the same. They can change depending on their mood. So yeah, very nice. Very glad to have met them. They were very kind. And the next group of guests um, were from Orange Studio. So they were promoting the Trigun Stampede anime series. The guest that came was Kenji Muto, Kiyotaka Waki, and Yoshihiro Watanabe. I'm definitely butchering their names, but those were the three guests. So let me show you guys their autographs. So that, this was really cool because we got a bash stamp right here and then a signature. So this is their so second autograph session. Um, for their second autograph session, this particular guest actually was drawing Vash during the first day, and he actually drew Vash the second day as well. However, the person be right before me got cut from getting a sketch the second session because they were running out of time and there was just too many people waiting to get autographs. So. Um, I ended up not getting a, sec a sketch for the second autograph session. However, I did went to the first autograph session, so I did get a sketch of Vash when he was younger. So yeah, this is their autographs as well. But yeah, very happy to have this. So here are the last two autographs I got. The first autograph is from Junichi Hayama, and he's worked on series such as Jojo Bizarre Adventure, Yu-Gi-Oh!, and most recently, One Piece Red movie. And then the other um, guest was Hisashi Kagawa, and he's a character designer and animation director for a lot of the Sailor Moon movies. So um, that is that. But yeah, those are the last two autographs. And speaking of autographs, I actually wanted to show you guys something very cool. So for the guest that did the Sailor Moon movies i actually ended up buying his illustration books um as well for autograph purposes because i really liked his works he has a few other series that um i do know that he's worked on such as phantom of the thief jean um and he has a few other illustrations in this book in particular that are from series that i do really like so yeah first i'll show you guys the sailor moon illustration book that he's done so yeah, it's just a collection of illustrations i'll just do a quick flip through but here if you purchase one of his illustration books he'll do an autograph as well but yeah i love sailor moon so much similar to car capture sakura this was my childhood series that i watch all the time on a daily basis um i just love my magic girl anime series so so much so yeah lots of really cool illustrations very happy to have this and this is the second illustration book that comes with um, Sailor Moon and some other series that he has done illustrations for. So yeah, I don't know all of them, but I do know a few. So we have Sailor Moon over here. And here are some other works that he has illustrated for. I do recognize them, but I can't remember the names of all these series from the top of my head. Yeah, so I think this character is from SS Railgun, I forgot her name, and then we have Jean from Phantom of the Thief. I'm pretty sure I know this series as well. I remember it being a little bit um, chaotic for this series, but I can't remember the name of the series on the top of my head. I just knew it was not the greatest show show I've watched. I actually handed the this illustration book for uh, the... Uh, Hisashi Kagawa to sign first. However, when he signed it, as you can see here, he ended up doing a sketch of Sailor Moon. Um, yeah, I was so shocked. I gave him this book, um, just thought that he was gonna sign it and, you know, be on my way. And then he ended up sketching this beautiful 
Sailor Moon holding a peace sign. So yeah, literally highlight of my day because I was not expecting this. This was actually the last day of the convention as well because I just bought it and I was like, oh, like I really love these illustrations. Let me get it. So yeah, he ended up doing the sketch. It's so beautiful. Um, I was not expecting it and I'm very happy to have it. And then my friend saw that he was doing sketches for purchases. So he ended up buying a Sailor Moon book, the illustration that I showed you earlier. And then he got a sketch of Sailor Mercury and I was so jealous of him because I love all of the Sailor Soldiers but Mercury is my favorite senshi so it is what it is but I love Sailor Moon she's very iconic as well but I think if I were to have handed out my illustration books I think I would have tried to give him this book first because for this cover it's white so it's a little bit easier to see um, but I don't mind it being on here either because at the end of the day, I wasn't expecting it. So I do have one more autograph that I got, um, but not on a shikishi board. Um, this particular guest was signing on posters of the series he was promoting. So here it is, the series that the guest, um, Junya Inoki, who is a Japanese voice actor. He voices the main character of the series Kamikatsu, working for God in a Godless World. It is a series premiering right now this spring on Crunchyroll, but he came to promote this series, um, which is very cool. If you guys don't know this voice actor, you might know him from another series called Jujutsu Kaisen. He actually is the voice actor of Yuji Itadori, so very, very cool. Anyways, he was the main guest, but there was actually a special guest at the Kamikatsu panel that not a lot of people knew, and he actually wasn't even a featured guest at SoccerCon, but he is a producer of the series, Shuhei Yamamoto. And so, yeah, I saw him by the table that the voice actor, Junya Inoki, was signing, and then I just asked him on the side if he could sign my poster, since he actually worked on the series as well. So yeah, I'm very happy to have these two autographs for this series. Very nice. And yeah, that wraps up all the autographs I got for SoccerCon. Now let's head on to the freebies that I got. Okay, so I'm gonna do a rapid fire of all the freebies that I got. Mostly all of them are from Bandai, Crunchyroll Booth, or Yen Press. So let's get started. So first I'm gonna show you all the posters that I got. So we have here are some uh, Country Row posters for their spring anime series. So we have Dead Mouth Dead Play. And then there's like a visual on the back as well, which I think is the anime key visual. Then we have um, Why Rayliana Ended at the Duke's Mansion anime visual. And I think this is one of the manhwa covers. We have Skip and Loafer, a series that I've been greatly enjoying, both manga and anime. We have A Galaxy Next Door, a series that I own but I have not read yet, should read soon. Then we have the uh, anime visual of Sacrificial Princess and the King of Beast. And then this one has a backside of one of the anime manga covers. And then in the backside we have one of the manga covers of the series. Then we have Sakia and Miyano first year. And then this is the movie visual of Sakia and Miyano graduation. So handsome. And then we have My Home Hero, a series that I actually am watching as well. That is all the posters from the Crunchyroll booth. And as you can see here, we do have this very beautiful visual of I from Oshinoko. This was what Yen Press was giving out on the first day of the convention since they ran out, I think, on the second day. But mainly was looking to pick up this poster because I love Oshinoko and I so beautiful. And I think this poster is just very high quality. And on the back side, we do have Aqua and Ruby from Oshinoko as well. So yeah, this was a very nice pickup. I do have one more smaller poster from Bandai. This is a poster for that time I got reincarnated as a slime. They were handing these out for the autograph sessions, but I did end up just asking to get my autograph sign on the shikishi board. And that is all the posters that I got. I did get some random knickknacks, so let's go. We have J Novel Club Light Novel and Manga Sampler. Just has a bunch of series um, in this little book, a few different chapters, and manga 
chapters as well. This was a nice pickup. Got a sticker for RWBY. A fan that was very needed because it got hot a little bit during the uh, waiting in line process of getting autographs. Got some bookmark for this series that I think had an anime adaption a few seasons ago. Sticker of slime. Magnet of Saki and Miano. Crunchyroll wristband as usual. Uh, we got a pin for the series, which is nice. Why re why Reliana ended up at the Duke's Mansion. Uh, this was a really cool pickup. It is a acrylic pen of business proposal. I was really happy to grab this. And the last item is this cup, which is probably one of the most random freebie I have ever gotten at a convention, but yeah. We got honey lemon soda. That is all of the freebies that I got at SoccerCon. Now let's head on to the outro. Alright, so here is an overview of some of the items that I got for this year's soccer con. I hope you guys enjoyed the haul and vlog portion of this video. It was my first time ever vlogging for my channel, so I know I'm very rusty, but I hope you guys still enjoyed it anyways, and hopefully I will learn to improve and film better vlogs for the future. And also, a special thanks again to Tokyo Treat and Soccer Co. for sponsoring today's video. I had a blast opening both boxes and seeing all the delicious snacks for the month of May. So if you guys are interested in subscribing to Tokyo Treat or Soccer Co., please check out the affiliate links and codes below in the description box as well as the pinned comment in the video. So I had a blast um, at this year's Soccer Con 2023 and I'm so happy to be able to have shared it with you guys. Thank you again for watching my video and I'll see you guys in my next one. Until then, take care. Bye!